Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I bought 10 pounds worth of ground pork from Shelton's Farms in Niles, Michigan. Um, I bought it at roughly $1.50 a pound, so I went ahead and bought 10 pounds. That way I can can it up and just have it on hand um, for to go to add to spaghetti, um, whatever you would add ground burger for, tacos, you know. So I'm going to can it. The reason why I'm canning it is one, freezer space. Two, to save on electricity so I don't have to run my chest freezer, which I do have, but I would like not to run it if I don't have to, because basically everything in this house runs off of electricity. So I'm trying to be conscientious about that. For three, if there is a power outage or whatever, then I don't have to worry about it spoiling. And number four is because it'll have a long shelf life. You ever buy canned tuna at the store, canned chicken, canned beef with gravy? Even canned pork you could buy at the store. So there's nothing wrong with doing it yourself. I'm going to show you the best of my ability with my phone on how to do this process. I have my Insta, it's not really Instapot brand, it's Carry brand. I got it at Rural King last year. I got it uh, starting to heat up for 90 minutes. That's, that's the timer set on. So let me, let's go ahead and get this started. So this is the raw pack method. I am not cooking this beforehand. Um, if you were to cook it up and put it in the jar, you would do about do 75 minutes. Since it is raw pack, I got it on there for 90 for a pint. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shove some pork in there and take my fist and kind of pack it down a bit, my knuckles. Concerned about every little gap in there, but I'm going to do my best. All right, that's good. That's about one inch headspace at the top, so it has room to do its pressure in the can.
Now I'm going to add a little salt to it. I heard you don't have to put salt um, in your canned meats or canned goods, but I prefer to do it anyway. Again, I'm using pink Himalayan salt because that's the salt of choice around here. Now I'm going to go get my vinegar. Keep it in this just on the countertop because I can't find a lid for it. Otherwise, I would recan with it. wipe all these lids off around the rim, make sure there's no grease or anything so I'm ensure I have a good seal. Take a lid and a band, put it on there until about hand tight. I don't want to crank it too much, but I do want to make sure it's good and snug on there. Now, if you're using like the Tatler lids, Tatler lids, then I hear I have never used those yet, but I'm going to. That you just want to do it a little bit looser, or if you're using a store bought jar. I can with store-bought jars. As long as the gaskets and lids are good, I have not had a problem yet. Um, those don't get tightened on nearly as tight as these either. They're just a, just like maybe a quarter of a turn looser, or a half turn even. Okay, this is controversial, but I reuse my lids too. And I make sure that they're sealed really good, and then if they're not sealed good, then I make sure I use it first and right away. Making sure the jars are not touching the sides of the cooker here. touching just a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. Just trying to make sure that the airflow and stuff just works around these jars. Oh, well, it looks like it, I, I can only hit four. I hit four, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in the fridge with the rest of the meat. Since this is cooking for 90 minutes, I want to keep it fresh. And um, maybe I won't get around to doing the rest of this meat today. It might be tomorrow. But I'm going to do that. So anyway, um, after this process is done, you, uh, you're going to shut the lid, close it, make sure it's on exhaust, and then when the cone starts coming through here, like the steam cone, you want to set your timer for, for uh, 10 minutes and let that steam pipe out of there for 10 minutes. When that timer goes off, I'm going to shut it to airtight. Let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Here's my little pressure, uh, my exhaust in my airtight. So what I'm going to do is leave it on exhaust. And then when that steam comes out of here for 10 minutes, I'm going to switch it to airtight like that. And then it'll start, uh, this will catch up when, it's, when the pressure is right and it's hot enough and it'll start pressure cooking it. Now, when I take it out, when it's done, I am going to Flip it back over to exhaust, let that go out all the way, or most of the way, and then I'm just going to open it and let it open and slowly cool those jars down. And then I will put them up into the pantry area. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, uh, please like, consider subscribing, and leave a comment. Have a nice day, everybody. God bless.